Hello and welcome to Daily Records. I am Tommy Burton and it's starting to get cold outside. So I have to wear my winter hat. Hope you all stay warm as the fall creeps in and it's cooling off. But we're not here about the weather. We're here for Daily Records. And today's Daily Record is Secret Messages by the Electric Light Orchestra or ELO. Either way you look at it. Uh, Secret Messages. This was released on June 5th, 1983. This was the 10th album released by ELO um, on their uh, imprint or on the Jet Records imprint. Uh, and this was the uh, last ELO album uh, to feature uh, bass player uh, Kelly Grokett. Um, this was also the last ELO album to feature... Uh, actual stringed instruments, an actual orchestra. Uh, and it was the last one released on the Jet label. So this was a, sort of a closing chapter uh, of a long story there. Uh, and um, in addition to all that, this was the last ELO album to reach the top 40 when it was released. So it was the last big hit. Now, what the idea behind this was, was that the album was supposedly... The, the big thing in the early 80s was backward masking and, and playing messages backwards. So the whole idea of the record is that it's full of these sort of hidden messages. Um, so if you played stuff backwards, um, it would give you secret messages. Uh, and so Jeff Lynne uh, sort of uh, was a Jeff Lynne producer and writer mastermind behind ELO. He thought that it would be kind of a uh, poking fun of like these supposed sa satanic messages that were uh, being recorded um, uh, uh, on other earlier ELO. ELO was uh, ab accused of this and uh, Jeff Lynne thought it was it was ridiculous, which it, which it kind of was. Um, and there was sort of a uh, a you know, this was an interesting time, early 80s, you had the PMRC and, and all that. You can look all this stuff up on the internet, but uh, it was quite a big hubbub at the time um, that bands and artists were using their records to um, to um, tell people things or tell kids things. Um, and so he had done something kind of similar uh, on Face the Music, an earlier uh, ELO album, uh, Fire on High. Um, he kind of made a, a, a secret message on that. Um, now, the back cover here, um, it was, uh, they were talking, there's like different things um, on the cover, but uh, on the original uh, English back cover, they said there was a warning, secret backward messages. Now, it's not on the American release, but... Um, because of that, because of like sort of knowing about it, the Americans being rather sensitive about it, they they deleted the uh, the blurb. Um, I didn't think they, they the sense of humor just wasn't there for them. Um, but so they sort of have these uh, stickers, these age stickers, and everything, and then the front cover. And if you look in the window there, uh, you can see the band, including Jeff, standing there. Uh, and so. Now, the stickers uh, also on the back cover, um, the, there's a message there, uh, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but uh, there is the uh, like names of the band, T.D. Ryan, Richard Tandy, uh, an anagram, um, F.Y.J. Fennell, Jeff Lynn, right here. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of little stuff on there uh, that's fun for the audiences. And so, um, there's Morse code on, um, there's, there's dots, uh, Morse code that spells out ELO, um, different things, um, uh, and it's sort of a fun thing, I, th I think kind of a response to some of the Paul is Dead stuff from the Beatles, just, uh, having a bit of fun. Now, there, uh, as far as the songs itself and talking about the album, there are a couple of, uh, hits, the main hit on here was Rock and Roll is King. Which was a which was a big um, a big uh, hit. Also, four little diamonds, straight ahead rock and roll number. But I'm a big fan of some of the ballads on this album, like "Letter from Spain," which I think is really beautiful. Uh, Bluebird. Uh, those are those are really really good songs as well. But um, 
that just kind of talks about a little bit of the music. It, it wasn't a big, huge hit album, and it did spell the uh, end of that that sort of era with uh, with ELO. Uh, now, originally, uh, the album was supposed to be a double set. Look at here, look at here, uh, and um, CBS Records, who was putting the album out, they just they just felt like it would be too expensive to produce so on and so so forth so it was reduced the original was reduced reduced to a single this came out this year uh the double version and it, it claims to be the uh full um as conceived by jeff land with the original uh original um track listing however there is a song uh beatles forever um that was left off of this uh, and uh, Jeff Land, the notes inside of this album, uh, Jeff Land mentions that this was the first time he recorded in digital, uh, using a digital multi-track tape recorder, uh, using some different studios. Um, and so uh, his words were, this is the first time the album has escaped intact. So, so this was the you know answer to the original double album. I can't honestly say that the double album version, it, it adds tracks and... and of course, I'm always of the opinion I want to hear more Jeff Land instead of less. But um, I can't say that the double album is just this vast improvement over the original single album. I don't think this is a terrible album. I'm a big fan of, of the ELO sound and, and what Jeff Land does. So uh, having said that, the single album is fine and you can track down original copies in good shape. But uh, the double album that came out this year, I mean, if you're a fan like me, I say go for it. Um, what are your thoughts on secret messages? Yay, nay, indifferent? I don't know. Comment down below. Like, subscribe, share. You know the routine. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's Tommy Burton 75 In the meantime, I'll see you all again tomorrow with another daily record.